This interview is part of the History Heard project. The content of this interview may be used for historical research. However, no part of the video itself may be reproduced without the express written permission of an authorized representative of History Heard or Eugenie Clark. Today is July 16th, 2009 at 4 o'clock p.m. This is an interview with Dr. Eugenie Clark in Sarasota, Florida. She was born on May 4th, 1922 in New York City, New York. So, when you founded Moat Marine in 1955, what was that like to be starting, just starting it from scratch? Did you bring this or is this, this no, my that was Here it is. We started with this building here, uh -huh. and that's all. Yeah. And a we had a Jeep. So one little building. And then within a few months. So when you started with just the building and the Jeep, and then. And, and then, then it, there was so much interest from fishermen and teachers and school children from the area that they wanted to bring the classes over. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing like it was formed where you could go and learn about the marine life. So, uh, and also scientists heard about the laboratory, so they started coming. And in January, we set our first shark lines for a scientist who wanted to catch a shark. Mm -hmm. And that was my assistant. There were only two of us on the staff, myself oh, wow. and Burl Chadwick, my assistant, if you got uh -huh. my book, you yeah. know who he is. And uh, he went out and he got these fantastic sharks for us. And we started studying them, and some of them were very lively. And some, the Vanderbilts gave us the money to put this pen up. Mm -hmm. So uh, about March, we had the pen going with live sharks in it, and it became the, the most interesting marine lab, and yeah. the only one on the west coast of Florida. Yeah. and. Uh, the local newspapers just loved it because they had some. We had so much news to tell them all the time. The sharks we were catching. We eventually published a paper called "Sharks of the West Coast of Florida," in which we enumerated all the sharks we were getting and how many. And mm -hmm. And so, um, did you ever think that it would become the most the world-renowned marine laboratory that it is I now? <laughs> I suppose it is world-renowned. Yeah. Yes, of course, now it is. Yeah. Well, it very quickly, I and mean, within a few years, it was known all over the world. Uh -huh. News items were picked up, and they said here was a lab being run by a, a woman, and you could go out and study live sharks. There's mm -hmm. no other place. So there. what was it like to be a woman? Also, I'm sure there weren't very many women in the... No, at that time there weren't, but thank goodness there are a lot of women. <laughs> and when we go to meetings now of the shark people, almost half of them are women. Yeah. It's the American Elasmobranch Society, uh -huh. which has given Harry Gilbert and me plaques. My plaque is in the other room. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's so nice to see all the young women going into the field now. Uh -huh. In my days, when I was a student at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, there were about uh, 30 or 35 graduate students, and mm. only two of us were women. Oh my gosh. And we, we then uh, went out on the big oceanographic ships and spent the night. Betty and I weren't allowed to go. Oh It was no. dangerous to have women on oh. aboard the ship at night. Now, they go out of their way to make sure that they have women and they're not yeah. showing sexual discrimination. So it's oh a good time God. to be a woman interested yeah. in this field. <laughs> um, and so have you always been interested in marine biology? Well, I was always interested in fishes since I was nine Fish. years old and went to yeah. the aquarium in New York, and I saw these wonderful fishes. Mm -hmm. um, so what inspired you to start the laboratory? Uh, the Vanderbilts were, had moved down to Englewood, and they started a small school for their child, mm -hmm. a private classroom really. And uh, when they heard, they decided to have me come down and be a guest lecturer. And I had just come out with the, my first book, which described this little marine laboratory in the Red Sea mm -hmm. on the coast of Egypt. And uh, I came down and it just got around that uh, I was gonna give a lecture there. And pretty soon, I mean, people were hungry for information yeah. about the local marine life. There wasn't any place they could go to. And it's just not, now, Moat Marine Laboratory is so popular because people yeah. really want to know what's in the sea here, what can we do about them. And so we were 
my lecture was absolutely packed. They moved it to the schoolhouse, wow. and they had a room in the schoolhouse for about 30 s people to uh -huh. come in, and then they mo moved it into the auditorium, and then they were there were people in the windows looking oh in gosh. because they couldn't get in the room. And the Vanderbilt said, there's such an interest on this. Wouldn't it be nice if you could start a small marine laboratory mm -hmm. like the one you described on the Red Sea? Mm -hmm. And they said, we'll give you some small funding and you can be the director and run it however you think it would be. And we'll have our son, young Bill, and, and others come to hear you speak and to see what you're doing and we'll sponsor your research. And the lab grew out of that. Mm -hmm. So how does it feel to have the little lab that you started now become this massive marine laboratory? <laughs> Well, I love it here, and I'm retired now officially. Yeah. Well, I but you're not really it, retired. But I'm working very hard. I'm working yeah. on seven <laughs> manuscripts right now oh that gosh. I hope to finish before I end. I'm going to Indonesia to wind up a research project that I've been doing out in the South Seas, and uh, that's that manuscript uh, is practically done, but I think I'll get a lot more data from this trip to Indonesia, which starts mm -hmm. in September. And uh, then I've got to keep writing up all this stuff. And yeah. Mm -hmm. And we have so many interesting things to write about that we've learned. Mm -hmm. And I've gotten help from National Geographic Society, the National Science Foundation, the National Geographic, uh, well, the, the University of Maryland uh, has a foundation and many people donated money to that to sponsor my research. So I feel a responsibility to publish the result, yeah. results of that. And I have uh, over 100 publications out already, <laughs> but I've got uh, seven more, three that I've got to <laughs> get finished because it's just so fascinating yeah. what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, so what were the biggest obstac obstacles that you faced? No, I didn't. I. No. There were a few obstacles, but strangely enough, I think it was balanced by the fact that people were sort of so surprised that they helped me. They remembered, yeah. oh, that woman that has a marine lab there, out of 50 marine laboratories in the, in the yeah. continent, they remember a woman. And, uh, so in so, and like when we went down and studied these big sharks in mm -hmm. s asleep in caves in, the, yeah. in Mexico, which was the top story for National Geographic magazine mm -hmm. cover story in, for that year that we published it. Everybody was fascinated, but they said, and I took my assistant, Anita George, a student, graduate student, and they said, how wonderful that you and Anita would go down into this cave with these big sharks and say, I said, well, there were four men that did it with us yeah. at various stages. But because you're a woman, they think it's, it's you're extra deal. brave. <laughs> oh my gosh. But so it's nice. Today there's equality. Yeah. And men and women are, are not treated, women aren't treated as dainty little things that can't <laughs> do what men do. Yeah. So, well, thank you very much. Thank you so much for your you're time. You're welcome.